This lesson is titled Nonlinear Problems. You'll notice as you solve questions from this particular lesson that they are a culmination of all the previous lessons we have been doing throughout this topic. You will cover questions related to exponential functions, quadratic functions, as well as reciprocal functions. I'm only going to complete one example for you. This example relates to an exponential function. It says that a car depreciates in value each year, as can be seen in the table below. T represents the amount of time in years that have passed since the car was purchased new. And V represents the value of the car in thousands of dollars. We can see this in the table here. Question A says, represent the situation above as an exponential graph. So when we look at the top row of our table of values, we've got T which goes as high as 8. So the top row is going to be our horizontal axis here. So we'll label this axis as T. We need to get as high as the number 8. So we'll just go up by one number at a time. When we look at the second row of our table of values, we can see that these numbers represent the value of V, or the value of the car. These numbers get as high as 30. So I'm going to label this axis as V, and I'm going to skip a square and go up by 10s. And I'll get to 30 without reaching the top. It doesn't hurt to go beyond 30. Let's now label each point. So looking at our first column here where t is 0 and v is 30, we would label that just here. When t is 1, v is 25.5. When t is 2, v is 21.7. When t is 3, v is 18.4. When t is 4, v is 15.7. When t is 5, v is 13.3. When t is 6, v is 11.3. When t is 7, v is 9.6. And when t is 8, v is 8.2. Now, when we draw our curve, you can see that it's an example of exponential decay. It starts off somewhat steep and gradually it seems to flatten out. This makes sense for a car because a car at first is worth a lot of money when it's new and each year it goes down in value and eventually as it gets older and older it doesn't go down much more in price. Question B says that the situation above can be modelled using an equation in the form V equals A bracket 0 0.85 bracket to the power of T. Now it wants us to calculate A, this value here, by substituting the values of T and V when T equals 0. Now when does T equal 0? It equals 0 at this point. So when T equals 0, V actually equals 30 as we can see by our table of values. Now what we need to do is substitute these two values into our equation and then we can find A. I'll start by writing the equation down, V equals A bracket 0 0.85 close bracket to the power of T. Now we're told that V equals 30 so we'll replace the V with 30 and we're also told that T equals 0. So we're going to replace the t with 0. Now what I would do next is I would go, what's 0 0.85 to the power of 0? I'll grab my calculator. Hopefully you already know what this is. 0 0.85 to the power of 0 equals 1. And this is because anything to the power of 0 will always equal 1. So we can now rewrite our equation. So it says 30 equals a times 1 since 0 0.85 to the power of 0 equals 1 and a times 1 is just a so then we get 30 equals a or a 
equals 30. This is the answer to question B. It just wanted us to calculate A. Let's now move on to question C. It says use the equation above to calculate the value of the car after 15 years have passed. What does it mean by the equation above? It just means the equation that we got in question B. The equation we had in question B was V equals A times 0 0.85 to the power of T. Now we worked out above that A equaled 30. So we can change our equation to V equals 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of T. Now looking back at question C, it wants us to calculate the value of the car after 15 years have passed, meaning that T equals 15. We can substitute that into our new equation, V equals 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of T, which is now 15. Bringing up our calculator, we just go 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of t, which is 15. And we get this rather long decimal. I want to remind you that V represents the value of the car in thousands of dollars. So what I think I should do here is I should times this by 1,000. And we get a better answer now. The car is now valued at $2,620.63. Let's round it to the nearest dollar, let's say $2,621. Let's now move on to question D. It says, how many years must pass before the value of the car reaches below $1,000? So we use the exact same equation as above, V equals 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of t. This time we don't know what t is, but we want to see how long until the value of the car is a thousand. That actually means that v is going to equal one. Remember we said v represents the value of the car in thousands of dollars. So one represents one thousand dollars. So we're going to substitute 1 in place of V, and we're going to use this to calculate T. Now when you're trying to find the value of a pronumeral that is actually a power, like we see in this problem here, it's actually quite challenging to do. It's something more at the advanced mass level. So in order to solve this, we're just going to use a guess and check method. All right, so I'm going to go 30 times 0 0.85, and I'm just going to put a random t value in. So let's start with 20. 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of 20 gives us 1.16. So this is slightly over $1,000. I'm going to try something else. 30 times 0 0.85 to the power of 25 this time. And this went well below a thousand dollars. We're down to about five hundred and fifteen. So maybe it's closer to twenty. Thirty times zero point eight five. Let's try to the power of twenty one this time. And that went just below one thousand dollars. We know when it was to the power of twenty, it was above a thousand dollars, and the power of twenty one, it was below a thousand dollars. So what are we going to say for question D? We'll say that after 21 years, the value of the car reaches below $1,000. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.